Welcome to the Community Radio Mystery Hour. I'm certain that tonight's suspense-packed episode will keep you glued to the edge of your seats. But first, let's hear a word from our fine sponsors for part one of tonight's Mystery Hour. Are you having a hard time sitting and listening to this? Are hemorrhoids keeping you up? Hemorrhoids used to be a problem for our friend Tim the truck driver until he found Barney's Drugstore. Now his roids are void. So tell us, Tim, what did Barney recommend? Well, first he suggested getting rid of the corn cobs and getting some double ply. Good advice. And when that didn't get my behind behind the steering wheel, he recommended Preparation H. Well, that did the trick. You can count on Barney's the way you can count on your fingers and toes. You can get double ply Preparation H and a whole lot more at Barney's Drugstore over on a high avenue in Wellston, where prescriptions are their main business. We're all glad that our friend Tim the truck driver is back behind the wheel thanks to Barney's. I'm headed to Dallas Chevrolet. It's time to buy that new truck. Would you pick up some stamps from the post office while you're there? It's just across the street. By the way, why do you always head to Dallas Chevrolet for a new truck? That Dallas Automotive Group is dependable. Why, they've been across from the post office in 1930, selling, servicing, and repairing vehicles. You know yourself, practice makes perfect. I dreamed of a house with four strong walls and a roof that wouldn't leak On a piece of land with lots of trees overlooking a little creek Oh, Donna Summers, can you help me out? Show me some houses that are like what I dreamed about That's Donna Summers Realty, she will help me out On South Pennsylvania Avenue, selling houses is what she's all about Hey, what's for supper? Yeah, Bob, I'm hungry. Give me a break. I just got home. Would you help by peeling the potatoes and washing these vegetables? <laughs> Not me. I worked all day. Can we do Mc- Michelini's, Mom? It's faster. Yeah, good idea, son. And I'll take the Michelina spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, little Jimmy's done it again, Mom. He's stuck. Important safety tip, family. Never touch frozen food with your tongue. Mom, did you just get home? Do you have an in-house emergency? Michelina's entrees take only four to six minutes in the microwave. Let Michelina's come to your rescue tonight. And now, let's return to our story. Tonight's story of intrigue of disappearing bodies, of large sums of money, of uneasy relations between men and women takes place just outside your door, just down the street, just around the corner. Do you think you really know your neighbors? Are you sure? Hmm, I wonder. Why don't you find a comfortable chair while we go back, way back in time? The year was 1943. America was at war. But it was a necessary war, a war we must fight and win. Everyone remembered the atrocities at Pearl Harbor, and everyone knew that that madman Hitler must be stopped. Still, there wasn't much visible difference down here in Appalachia. In all outward signs, life was going on pretty much as before. Yes, a lot of young men had already gone into service far from home in training camps, if not in actual battle, and sadly... Jackson County had had its first casualty, a fine young man named Jingle Davis. A lot of people had left the area for defense jobs in Dayton or Columbus, 
Many went to Kurt, Curtis Wright or Temkin Roller Bearing, but some stayed closer to home and commuted to the munitions plant in Londonderry. Meanwhile, in Jackson, the biggest contributors to the local economy were Jackson Iron and Steel Company, Globe Iron, and the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad. DTNI was a repair shop for railway boxcars that rolled in from all across the United States, and that's where the trouble started. Early in February, 1943. Boy, was it a cold one last night! Yeah, when I saw the stars as clear as they were, I knew it was going to be colder than those blocks of ice over at the ice plant. I was up all night putting coal on that stove just to keep my young'uns from freezing. Okay, let's open this one up and see what we have to do in here. Holy smoke! What's that? Is it a... A dummy? Or a dead guy? Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead, all right. No, wait. He's still breathing. I think he's trying to say something. Listen. Nobody. I think we should probably call the sheriff. Hello? Yeah, this is Clyde down at the car shops. We've got a dead body. Yeah, you better send the sheriff on down and hurry. Sheriff? Deputy? Okay, what do you boys got? You better come in the car and see for yourself. You boys stay back now. We'll take it from here. Hold on there, Howard. Did any of you boys recognize the stiff? No, I didn't. Never seen him before. He did say something before he died. It sounded like he said, Melody. Deputy Howard, why don't you go through his pockets? Anything in there, Deputy? Yeah, some change and some keys. Looks like the house. Here's a dress pocket to the ball. Why, why, I think that's a safety deposit key. Anything else, Deputy? No, no wallets, no papers. What do you think killed him, Sheriff? I don't know. He uh, has a cut up here on his forehead, right below his hairline. And it looks like he has a black eye here on the same side. Oh, yeah, he has some blood on his collar. Uh-oh, he has some blood coming out of his ear. A little bit of blood here. We better get Coroner Abe down here. Howard, call the coroner. What have you got, Sheriff? Hey, we got a complicated case here. The boys down here found a body in a car. Said he was alive when they found him. They think he said Melody. Before he died. A little bit of blood coming out of his ear. We need a cause of death from you as uh, soon as you figure it out. Why don't you come here and take a look? Oh, yeah. This is complicated. Okay, I'll take it from here. I'll let you know when I come up with the cause of death. See you fellows at the St. Valentine's Day dance over at the Knights of Pythias. Mm -hmm. I'd 
better stop at the ice factory and pick up that ice for the Knights of Pythias dance and uh, the cans of pretzels uh, over at Schaefer's Grocery. Oh, and I need to stop by and let Henry know that his brother-in-law is dead again. As the county coroner heads for the ice plant, what do you suppose he meant when he said that the brother-in-law is dead again? Hey, Henry! You'll never guess who the stiff is in the back of the hearse. Come on out and look. Very funny, Abe. You've got the invisible man back here. What's with the empty hearse? What? Why, that lousy son of a gun. You know your dead brother-in-law was in the back not one minute ago? Really dead this time. I checked him myself. Where is he? Let's look around. He couldn't have gotten far. What? You're kidding, right? No, I guess you're not kidding. Well, where is he? I don't know, but just like a bad penny, I'm sure he'll turn up again. Maybe the sheriff can help us out with this. Do you think we should let the rest of them know about this? Yeah, we'd better make some calls. I thought we were through with this trouble. This has already cost us a lot. We've already paid the price, but he is really dead now. Maybe this is over. Not with the body still out there. We could have buried the problem with the body. We should have buried that body when we had the chance. What do you suppose happened to the body? And what do the coroner and the ice plant manager Henry mean when they say he's really dead this time? And what's this business about trouble? And they all paid the price? I sure would like to know. I bet you would, too. But first, let's hear another word from our sponsors. Hello, folks. This is Pablo Cruz, your beach bum reporter, bringing you flashback from last year's community beach party. Yes, through the magic of radio, we can actually step back in time and relive the triumph and the tragedy from last year's terrific event. Let's talk to one of the competitors from the beach volleyball tournament. Tell me, sir, were you one of the winners in last year's beach volleyball tournament? Yeah, I was. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess you and your teammates must have had a pretty good time last year. Would you care to comment on that? I see. Well then, since you had so much fun last year and had such success in the tourney, I imagine you are going to compete again this year, aren't you? Yeah, oh yeah. <sighs> okay, well thank you for that scintillating interview. Now let's see, over here in the crowd of onlookers, I can see one of last year's triathlon competitors. Let's get a word with her. Excuse me. You ran last year's inaugural triathlon race, didn't you? Yeah, I ran in that race. Well, sounds like I just interrupted your training workout for this year's race. No, I'm <coughs> still um, trying to recover from the last year's race. Oh, I see. Well, um, carry on and good luck to you. Anyway, folks, last year's community beach party was such a great success that we want to invite you to plan on attending this year's event. We will have all the same entertain entertainment venues, plus lots of new and exciting events this year. For instance, we are going to add a mountain bike race this year, and a wall climbing event. Plus, we will have a food court with all kinds of good food. Swimming, biking, skating, and boating events, and more. You name it, we got it. We're already lining up music groups of all kinds, including pop music, country, gospel, bluegrass, rock, and more. So mark your calendars now for Saturday, July 25th. 
and make plans to come party at the beach at Lake Alma State Park. Where can I go for homemade sausage? Newman's Grocery. Where can I go for balk and penny candy? Newman's Grocery. Where can I go for a Jackson County Bill? Newman's Grocery. Where can I go for old-fashioned service? Newman's Grocery. That's Newman's Meats and Groceries on West Broadway in Wellston, serving all your grocery needs since 1929. In the beginning, there was the void. And from the void came the essence of the universe, space. And born from this essence came the stars and then the planets. Into this universe, onto this planet, into this county came the Astronomical Society. And at 2.04 p.m. on February 26th in Venezuela, our sun will go dark for two minutes and 50 seconds. Find out the consequences of this on March 11th at 7 p.m. at the Wellston Public Library when Phil Zito and George Eberts tell us about their solar eclipse experiences in Venezuela. Now let's return to our story. It was a cold night. It was a still warm body. It was a song. Did the coroner lose body? Did someone take the body? Or was this man found in the train car really not dead after all? Maybe we can find the answers to some of our questions at the sheriff's office with a little help from our heroine, Mel. Deputy Howard, this is dispatch. Betty's cat's up in the tree again. Go see what we can do. Hi, Mel. What's the news at the Jackson Herald today? I need to talk to the sheriff about what happened down at the car shops. What did he find? I'm not allowed to say. But there is a question of where it is now. But you better go talk to the sheriff. Is he in? Hold on. I'll see if he's in. Hey, Sheriff, you in for Mel, our local news hound? She's here snooping around about the business at the car shops. So, do you want to see her? How could she know anything about this already? Does she know the body is, uh, I don't know, missing? She was here earlier when the call came in from the car shops. So, do you want to see her? Uh... I have to talk to her sooner or later. Sure, send her in. Hello, Sheriff. So tell me about what happened down at the car shops today. Well, we're in the middle of a very sensitive, complicated investigation. I can't tell you too much right now. We found a body with no ID. We don't know who he is. We don't know the cause of death yet. So there's not much I can tell you. When I know something, you'll know something. So, are you going over to the St. Valentine's Day dance at the Knights of Pythias? I don't suppose you'll save me a dance. Now, Sheriff. Let's follow along now as our heroine Mel returns to her office at the Jackson Herald. Mel. Oh, this package was here for you. Did you find anything more about what happened at the car shops? Thanks. No, the sheriff had no new information for me, or so he said. It was really odd, though. There was coffee all over his desk. 
Hold my calls and let me throw together something for tomorrow's edition. All right. Call me if you need me. Forget that. Here is the lead on the car shop's body. I'm going to check some of these out. Hi. Yeah, it's me. You need to meet me at Harbarger's in ten minutes. We need to talk about the funeral that wasn't. Our intrepid reporter, Mel, is on her way to Harbarger's restaurant. Who do you suppose she's going to meet there? Let's find out. Coffee? Yes, please. Thanks, Emma Jean. How's business? Oh, it's a little slow this morning. I've been working on my application to Juilliard in New York City. But there's really no point. I'll never be able to afford it pouring coffee and giving piano lessons at night. Can I get you something to eat? No, thanks. I'm waiting on Abe, our friendly neighborhood coroner. Hello, Coroner Abe. Coffee? Hi, Mel. Thanks, Emma Jean. Now, what's all this talk, Mel, about a funeral it wasn't? Is there an empty coffin I should know about? Well, there was an empty coffin. Shh! And according to something I just read, you do know about it. I'm guessing that what I just read is true. Now, can't a man drop a cup of coffee now and then without you seeing some crime in it? What I've just read is an expose with you as one of the main characters. It's sinful Shh. how you pressured the good minister to perform the ceremony. And I'm putting you on notice here and now, mister, if you ever tell Imogene about her parentage, you'll be the next body to disappear. So how much of that insurance money did you give to Imogene? Um, how the heck do you know about all this? Let's just say I have my sources, and according to all that I've read, you have a great motive for making a certain body disappear. Now, just hold on. Don't you think if I were to kill him, I wouldn't leave him where he could be found? Leaving him where he could be found makes it look as if your not-so-good friend, the sheriff, has had a hand in this. Pretty convenient for you, isn't it? If this is a matter of money... Yes, it is. But not for me. I have all the money I need. It's a matter of Imogene getting her share. How much do you think that should be? How much did you receive from the insurance? $5,000? Well, she shouldn't have it all. Yes, she should. And I don't want her to know where it's coming from. Make the arrangements. It would be unusual to receive a $5,000 tip on a five-cent cup of coffee. But... I'll see you at the dance, coroner. Bye, Imogene. I've got a lot of people to see today. And finish that application to Juilliard, because you never know. Let's watch now as our intrepid reporter, Mel, makes her way to the bank. Maybe she needs a new car loan. Hello, Martha. I'd like to speak to Gil. Is he in? 
Sure, Mel. Go on back. Mel, what a nice surprise. Come on in and have a seat. You're here for that new car loan, I guess. Finally getting rid of your old clunker, huh? Good for you. Nice office for a bank president, Gil. And I have all the money I need, thank you. And there's nothing wrong with my car. The rates might be a little higher... But I could always get a loan from Pig Iron Malone, our friendly local mobster. I believe you two have already met. I'll say about a year ago when you opened this bank. Ooh, ooh. Humana, humana. Need a hand, Gil? I've been meaning to get that chair fixed. What kind of crazy story are you cooking up and not, depending on me? Not such a crazy one. And not an invention. You know this one. It's a story of a man trying to open a new business. Let's say a bank. But he's short on capital and no other bank wants to help the competition. And so he goes to a more private source. So you, I mean, he goes to the Chicago mob's local connection. Our boy Pig Iron Malone. And gets the money he needs to start. But part of the payback is laundering money for the Chicago gang. And then the mob's courier is found dead in a boxcar right here in Jackson. That's a real interesting story, Mel. With a safety deposit key from this bank in his pocket. Gil, who do you think may have killed that man? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Are you all right down there, Gil? Oh, Carmine. Did he really have the key on him? Uh, that isn't the kind of thing that the bank life examiners like to hear about. I'll keep it quiet. If you fund the proposal that the minister brings before you later today. I'd better be going, Gil, so you can fix that chair. I'll see you at the dance. How about that, Mill? What do you suppose she has on the coroner and the banker? I wonder who else just might be involved in this. Well, let's find out right after these words from our sponsors. Hello, folks. This is Edward R. Murrow with all the news that's worth repeating. Flash, this just in from our Wellston desk. Noted local prosecuting attorney Harry B. Reese puts mob courier away for money laundering scheme. Local gangster Bugsy O'Toole, reputed to be the right-hand man of Pig Iron Malone, was sentenced to 20 years this afternoon after his conviction for money laundering, racketeering, and threatening an officer of the court. According to Attorney Reese, quote, This conviction is just the tip of the iceberg. This corruption extends all the way into the offices of some of this county's highest elected officials, and we won't stop until they're all behind bars. Everyone knows that Bugsy O'Toole works for Pig Iron Malone, and he's next on my list, unquote. When asked to comment about... Upon the conviction and Mr. Reese's comments, Malone said, Bugsy who? I've never heard of him. But I'll tell you this, a certain nosy big mouth attorney better mind his own business or I'm going to get mad. When asked what that means, Malone said, I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Get out of my face. Meanwhile, as he was led away to the county jail, Bugsy O'Toole was reportedly laughing and bragging that he would never do a day of that time. This reporter wonders what he knows that we don't. Perhaps he has friends in high places. This is Edward R. Murrow signing off. This historic piece of reporting is brought to you by Oates, Heiser, Regan, and Miller, attorneys at law in Wellston, who are proud sponsors of the Community Radio Mystery Hour. Laura's Diner, there ain't none finer. She makes the best salads in town. Her vegetable stew won't make anybody frown. Her blonde hair makes the sun look dim. Her smile makes everyone grin. So when you're hungry, just come on in. It's the cleanest place you've ever been. That's Laura's Diner. There ain't none finer. And from Laura herself, you'll get a big howdy. Susie, come on out. You've been in there for an hour. I'm going to be late for school. I'll be out in a minute. Quit knocking. Come on, Susie. Mom, tell Bobby to quit knocking. Children, clear out. I need the bathroom now. 
Mom! Sound familiar? Have you un- outgrown your house? Call Century 21 Holly and Associates. They'll help you find a home that's right for your whole family. That's Century 21 Holly and Associates at 693 East Main Street in Jackson. For help reaching your investment goals. For help planning for your retirement. For help reducing your taxes. For quality investments and personal service, stop by and see David Furby at 241 Main Street in Jackson, your Edward Jones Investment Representative. Edward Jones, an investment firm with over 125 years experience. We'll get back to our story shortly, but first, let's hear a great tune from our own community band. Hit it, Sandy. That was swell, guys. What a great sound. And now let's get back to our story. When we left our fearless reporter, Mel, she was sure steamed up about something. But what? Well, the sheriff seems to be in the dark. What was the mystery package that our heroine received that tipped her off to what was really going on? How much dirty money is there in the county? And how deeply is the mob involved in our story? How many more of the town's good citizens are involved? Is Imogene's talent alone enough for her to make it into Juilliard? And why is Gil afraid of the bank examiners? Does anybody know what happened to the body? And now, why is our heroine headed for church? I'll be with you in a moment. One of these days... I'm going to have to automate these bells somehow 
I'm getting too old to pull on these ropes. Mel, well, I'll be. And look, the roof of the church hasn't fallen in. <laughs> Very funny, Reverend. You know, Mel, you should come in more often to participate in the sacraments. In a way, that's what I've come in here for today. I've heard that confession is good for the soul. That true, Reverend? Why, yes, Mel. Why don't we sit over here and you can tell me what's on your mind? Actually, Reverend, I think confession might be good for your soul. I, I don't have any idea what you're talking about, Mel. I was just over at Harbarger's having coffee. That Emma Jean is a wonderful girl. She looks a lot like her dad. She looks a lot like you. Oh. You all right, Reverend? You, you didn't say anything to Emma Jean, did you? Of course not. I don't think children should be punished for the sins of the father. Well, how did you find out? I received a little book that told some interesting stories about some local folks. About a minister performing a funeral for a man that wasn't dead because this same man found out about the minister having an illegitimate daughter. I don't think your story is anybody else's business. I like you, Reverend, and I like Emma Jean. I sure would like to help you both out. The man whose funeral you performed was actually found dead this morning. Really dead this time. Any idea who might have wanted him permanently quiet? Well, that was an evil man. Ooh. But I didn't kill him. You may not have, but you had every reason to. Can you prove that you didn't do it? They hang people for killing in this state. What do you want from me? I want you to take the money that he was blackmailing out of you and start putting it into a home for unwed mothers. I don't have enough money to do that. This afternoon, I want you to go over to Gill at the bank. Uh, stay away from his chair. He was having trouble with it earlier and ask him for help with this project. I believe you will find him to be in a very generous mood today. Now let's follow along now as Mel makes her way to the ice plant. Hey, Mel. Hey, Henry. How are the wife and kids? Great. How's the news business treating you? How about a piece of candy? I've got some whorehound. Yes, thanks. The news business has been really good, particularly when a dead man comes back to life. Are you branching out into fiction now? Nope. But I had a great idea delivered to me down at the paper. You wouldn't believe what it said. Actually, I guess you would believe it. You're in it. You have the starring role. Why don't you have a seat and tell me the whole story? Here it is. A man dies, but not really. He just stages his death so that he and a friend can collect on a big life insurance policy. And the dead man can go off to Chicago to hook up with the mob for some sweetheart deal. And the friend can continue as coroner. You and your wife, the dead man's sister, inherit this ice plant with the stipulation that if it were to ever make a profit, the dead man would receive 5% off the top. Only now, this same dead man shows up actually dead, at least for a little while. 
and then disappears from your very parking lot. So, um, where did you stash the body? Or is it already on its way to Wellston with the afternoon train load of ice? Hmm, well, a story like that could be very embarrassing for a lot of important people around here. That's a shame. A lot of important people around here should be atoning for their past sins. For example, a man like yourself who took this ice plant and turned it into a success over this past year and who just got a 5% raise. You could atone by giving that 5%. What's that amount to, Henry? About $1,500? To the Grand Poobah of the Knights of Pythias at the dance tonight for them to use in their charitable works. That 5% could buy a lot of peace for a man like yourself. Well, being a peaceful man, that sounds appealing to me. See you at the dance tonight, Henry. I'll save a dance for you. Later, Mel. Okay, four down and one to go. That dead man has certainly been doing a lot more for people now that he's really dead. Now for the sheriff. What charitable deed could I possibly get him to do now that I have the goods on him? I have a scholarship to Juilliard for Emma Jean, a home for unwed mothers, and that $1,500 for the charitable works of the Knights of Pythias. Maybe the children at the county home could use some help. I wonder what Mel has in mind for the sheriff. Well, let's find out. to shoot the cat to get out of the tree? Oh, hi, Mel. Don't print that. That deputy just shot Betty's cat. What are you doing back here? A slow day for news? No. Actually, I've had a very busy day. Is the sheriff in? Wait here. I'll check. He may have gone out the back door to check on the cat. Yeah, he's in. Go on back. You know the way. What can I do for you this time, Mel? We'll get to that. First, I want to tell you a story. It's not very long, but the characters are quite believable. You'll find it's right up your alley. It's about a homicide that was never prosecuted five years ago for lack of evidence. It's about a young chief deputy who was in charge of that evidence. It's about Pig Iron Malone going free because of the disappearance of that evidence. It's about the meteoric rise of that same chief deputy to sheriff. However, that sheriff had to turn his head whenever Malone and his Chicago cronies wanted to run some money through the county to clean it up before its trip back to Chicago. That's a pretty common story. Where'd you say it happened? It happened right here, Sheriff. I read all about it in an expose that was delivered to me today. It was written by a man who died twice, once a year ago and again this morning. Except the body is missing. Is this a case of more disappearing evidence, Sheriff? I have a story of missing evidence for you. I have one key to an empty safety deposit box. I can't imagine someone having an empty safety deposit box where there should be several thousand dollars in it. What's your take on that, Mel? You have one of the keys. Is it possible that more than one key exists? Did you ask Pig Iron how many other keys to that box are floating around? You raise a lot of interesting questions. Does this story of yours have an ending? Actually, for a rather complicated story, it's having several happy endings. Here's how I see your chapter ending. 
The county's children's home is in desperate need of a patron. How do you think this story will turn out? Will it have a happy ending as the sheriff wishes? Well, we'll be right back for the conclusion of tonight's story right after these messages from our sponsors. Stiff and Stiffler Funeral Home and Mortuary. Got a body that you don't know what to do with? Need some information on a cremation? Do you yearn for an urn? Don't blow a gasket. We got the casket. If things didn't go well with the nurse, we got the hearse. Want to send some out with a bang? We got the whole shebang. If you can pay, we got away at Stiff and Stiffler Funeral Parlor and Mortuary. You can count on us for sensitivity and understanding. Credit cards and cash only. No checks accepted. legal problems may not involve anything as sinister as a dead body or an empty coffin. Maybe they are fire. If so, call Sue M. Plenty and Bill Alot, attorneys at law. From simple no frill wills to those problems you'd rather not talk about, those complicated problems like our friends in the story are having, that's Sue M. Plenty and Bill Alot, attorneys at law, right next door to the stiff and stiffer funeral home. I got rhythm, I got music, hummingbird music, that's the instrument that I crave. Hummingbird music, hummingbird music, hummingbird music, that's all that I could want. Is the minister as innocent as he appears? Is Mel as innocent as she appears? Is anyone innocent? Did anyone not have a reason to kill the dead man? How many times can one man die? And how many lives does a cat have? Well, let's join our gang over at the Knights of Pythias Valentine's Day Dance. Tonight's fundraiser is off to a great start. Henry, from over at the ice plant, has given $1,500 to further our charitable work. of the children's home today. That's great news, Sheriff. I'll drop in the, on them myself from time to time to see how things are going. Mel, did you save that dance for me? Or is your dance card full? This one's for you, Henry. That was a wonderful donation you made to the night. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that a wonderful idea I had? And I'm so glad you had it for me. Why did you give me another chance? Everyone deserves a second chance. <laughs> Oh, that's right. 
Oh boy, I like this. I do too. Chop-chops are really fun. <laughs> Hey, Mel, can I have this dance? Why, Reverend. Of course, Gil. I was pleased to hear your announcement about the home for unwed mothers. It's about time those poor women had the care they need. I'm so glad I made you happy, Mel. I hope that settles everything between me and you and the Reverend keeps his hands to himself. You can bank on it, Gil. Reverend, I don't know what to do. I raised a cat from a kitten and now it's dead. Wedged up in the forest of a tree. A Debbie Howard shot it. That's not the worst of it. My husband Bill went up the ladder to get it. But the ladder slipped. And now we stuck up there too. And I'm afraid to call the sheriff's office to get help. It's hard to say what they'll do to Bill. Mel, may I have this dance? I love this song. Why, Reverend, I didn't know you went for secular music. But of course, I'd love to dance with the new manager of the home for unwed mothers. Did you hear about Betty's cat? Tragic. I just hope Bill can get down before Deputy Howard gets there. Uh, you know, I, I understand that several good things happened today. I hope we can let the dead rest in peace. Yes, you may rest assured the dead will not rise again. before it gets too late? Sure, Abe. I've got time for it, Anne. Isn't the music wonderful? What's the name of that song? A Pretty Girl is Like a Melody. It's my favorite. Yes, I hope to hear more beautiful music when Emma Jean gets back from Juilliard. You did a good deed today. And I've always heard that when someone does a good deed, it comes back to them tenfold. Just think what you have in store. Hey, what do you mean by that, Mel? I'll save my last dance for you. How about some punch? Hey, what you put in there, put it. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Jean. How about a glass of your famous punch? <laughs> oh, Mel, I have to tell you what happened. You won't believe it. I received a great gift today. I found $5,000 in the cash register. $5,000. That'll pay for all four years at Juilliard. Can you believe the luck? I mailed that application today. The only thing, Mel, that I'll be sad about is that I'll be leaving and I won't get to see you. Well, I'll be leaving myself. My dream came true today, too. I'm going to be able to write the novel that's been knocking around in my head. And now I have the material for it, the mystery plot. As she drives out of town, Melody pats her purse, the purse that contains the expose, the material for her mystery plot, and the last of the blackmail money that was to be the final payment to the dead man from the five men in the small Midwestern town. And the dead man, how did he die? And his last word, Melody, was it a reference to a song or to a woman? In January of 1997, something extraordinary was born of our community. A group of citizens of special ability came together. A woman of remarkable experience came to lead them. 
and they called themselves the Community Band, for lack of a better name. And they shared their love of the music with all who were willing to listen. And it was mellifluous. Well, almost. But we're still together, still playing, and hoping you'll join us for our second annual swing concert on April 26th at 2 p.m. at the Wellston High School Auditorium. On May 5, 1998, in the primary election, Bill Martin will be running for Common Pleas Judge. He would appreciate your vote. Mr. Martin is well experienced. He has served as Common Pleas Judge for the term ending in 1992. So on primary day, please vote for Bill Martin, paid for by the William C. Martin Campaign for Judge, Agnes I. Martin, Treasurer. Was it Eddie Rakenbacker who said, any crash that you can walk away from is a successful landing? If you would like to learn how to fly an airplane, think Blue Sky Aviation. If you would like to learn how to safely land an airplane, think Blue Sky Aviation. Call Blue Sky Aviation at the Jackson County Airport and let Bobby Swank teach you how to fly. Today's Radio Mystery Hour has been sponsored in part by Edward Jones. Edward Jones has been serving individual investors for more than 125 years. Edward Jones can help you build financial security. See your local Edward Jones investment representative, David Furby, at 241 Main Street in Jackson. Tonight's episode of the Community Radio Mystery Hour was written by Phil Zito, Marianne Hartwick, with Margie Jenkins, Melody Farley, and Suzanne Hartwick, and was directed by Robert Swank. Music was provided by the Community Band, with Sandra Nodruff at the piano and also directing the band. Actors tonight included Reverend Gary Beckwith as Gil the Banker, Jay Chose as Abe the Coroner, Gary Argo as Henry the Ice Plant Manager, Jim Harris as the Sheriff. Stephen Johnson was Deputy Howard. Carol Swank played the part of Melody, our intrepid reporter. Erica Osborne was the dispatcher. Glenna Dingus played Imogene. John Jackson was the Reverend. Suzanne Hartwick played the part of Betty. Our sponsors tonight included Barney's Drugstore, Louis Gino's, Oates, Heiser, Regan, and Miller, Edward Jones Investments, Donna Summers Realty, the Jackson County Astronomical Society, Dallas Chevrolet, Hummingbird Music, Century 21 Holly & Associates, Bill Martin for Common Pleas Judge, Laura Munsell, Blue Sky Aviation, and Newman's Meats and Groceries. Our sound effects crew tonight were Rihanna Lees, Justin Lees, Brent Davis, Rachel Beckwith, Chad Cruz, Joe Ringling, Aaron Heiser, and under the direction of Kathy Osborne. The commercial people were Phil Zito, Kathy Osborne, Mary Ann Hartwick, the talented and gifted students of Carol Swank, Erica Osborne, Danny Keck, Barb Davis, Rihanna Lees, Justin Lees, Jackie Johnson, Stephen Johnston, Suzanne Hartwick, Jen Allard, and Philip Keck, all under the direction of Mary Ann Hartwick. The teasers on the radio were provided by Phil Zito, Russ Hartwick, Mary Ann Hartwick, Suzanne Hartwick. Kathy Osborne, Jim Harris, and Jonathan Bell of the radio. If you enjoyed tonight's performance, we would like to hear from you. Please call WYPC-FM with your comments. And now, from all of us here at the Community Radio Mystery Hour, thanks for joining us. God bless, and good night. You're listening to WYPC, Wellston, Jackson.